program for the scientific exploration of the moon is being vigorously pursued by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. The primary objective in the advanced lunar satellites will be high resolution television or photography, which will give us the information on the structure of the surface that we need for the design of the first landing vehicles. This high resolution TV will also give us the material that we need for the selection of the best sites for landing. When the satellite reconnaissance is completed, we will attempt to make soft landings of instrumented capsules on the surface. These capsules will contain simple experiments at first and more complex instrumentation later on. The advanced landing vehicles will include X-ray spectroscopes for the determination of the materials in the lunar surface and probably two television systems, one to inspect the surrounding terrain and a second for a close examination of the rocks near the landing site. The structure of the moon's interior is a question of the greatest importance for understanding the origins and development of the solar system. In order to investigate the interior of the moon, we will have seismographs placed on the surface to detect moon quakes and gravimeters to measure the land tides produced on the moon by the sun and the earth. These latter instruments will tell us the internal structure of the moon by measuring its response to external forces. We may then go on to the landing of a vehicle which is capable of locomotion under command from the Earth. This vehicle would explore the moon's surface under control of a ground operator a quarter of a million miles away. It will explore the moon over large areas around the landing site, collecting samples for automatic analysis during the lunar day, hibernating at night, and coming to life again at the lunar dawn when the sun strikes its solar cells. This project will be the ultimate in unmanned exploration. Finally, we will undertake lunar flights, manned exploration, and the establishment of a lunar scientific observatory. In this film, two scientists, Professor Harold C. Urey and Professor Thomas Gold, tell us why the moon is a particularly interesting and important object to the scientist. The film was made during a panel discussion on major scientific problems in space exploration. Other members of the panel were Professor Gerard de Vaucouleur and Mr. Nicholas Christophilus. I am Robert Jastrow of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Now first I shall introduce the members of the panel, uh, Professor Thomas Gold of Harvard College Observatory, uh, Dr. G. de Vaucouleur of Harvard College Observatory, uh, Mr. Nicholas Christophilus of the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory in Livermore, California, and Professor Harold C. Urey of the University of California campus at La Jolla, California. To start, uh, let me make a remark about the moon, and I, I hope that you will all interrupt me with your own ideas as, as we proceed. Uh, the project of lunar explorations has been adopted by NASA as one of its major projects, and uh, uh, the adoption of this very expensive program as a major part of the NASA uh, Space Sciences program uh, comes from the fact that the moon is perhaps the most interesting major accessible object in the skies. I would agree with that, um, Jasko. Uh, <clears throat> the moon, uh, I rather think, is an older object as an object than is the Earth. In fact, it may very well be, in my opinion, that the Earth accumulated out of objects such as the moon or fragments of such objects and that it by accident was preserved. Uh, <clears throat> I would say that this idea is not certain at all. Uh, of course, if we were certain about all of these things, I think none of us would be interested in investigating at all. Uh, uh, the moon is an object in the solar system that probably has been changed least by uh, physical processes since it was formed. Why is that, Dr. Well, it, it has no water, for one thing, and water on the Earth um, has a way of eroding down the mountains and emptying them into the sea and piling up sedimentary rocks on the surface so that it has proved to be very difficult uh, to find out what the interior of the Earth is like. This has occupied geophysicists for a very long time and required a great deal of experimentation to get some rather elementary notions about the structure of the Earth. 
Now, some of the things have not been... It's also difficult to find out how uh, the Earth was formed. And very little surface. record of how it was formed is left behind. Uh, would you, uh, could you say that at the moon, we all agree that the moon is perhaps the only major accessible object, easily accessible object in current terms, whose, uh, who, which, whose face goes back almost to the origin of the solar system? I rather think so. Now, uh, in connection with that, uh, Jastro, may I just say what I really think about that we will find about the surface of the moon. I rather think that our stone meteorites, as I told the Academy and the Physical Society this week, are coming from the surface of the moon. If this is true, we have already dated the surface of the moon. It's four and a half billion years old. No. Uh, we, we know what its composition is. The oldest rocks we have found on the Earth date about three billion years. There's a whole one and a half billion years of history of the Earth that is completely lost to us, so far as we know, and various ideas are proposed as to where this went to. The, we have the, the feeling, which we have partly obtained from discussions with, with you and with other people who have studied the moon and planets, that the moon is an exceptionally interesting object. If you are concerned with cosmology, with theories of the origin of the solar system and the universe, and after all, these are really the, the grandest problems to occupy the mind of man since the beginning of history. Then the moon is, in a sense, more interesting to you than Mars and Venus. That's right. I yes. agree with it's that. It's interesting, not to the biologist. Not to biologists. the man who cares about the origin of the universe. That's right. Now, the only problem is, uh, granted that the history of the solar system is written on the face of the moon, we have to get close enough to read this writing. Uh, one of the things we will do, for example, is to install a seismograph on the surface of the moon, yes. which will be operated by remote control and will telemeter back the level of tremors uh, in the oh. moon's interior. We will also place magnetometers on the surface of the moon. And I think that uh, perhaps you could tell us why the magnetometer is so important with regard to the core of the moon and so forth. Yes. Well. Uh one thinks, of course, on the earth, that on the Earth, the magnetic field is associated with the liquid core that the Earth possesses, and one has good reason for thinking that no such core exists in the Moon. That is, so that uh, let me just develop this, if I may. Uh, the idea being that the magnetic field of the Earth is produced by electric currents uh, circulating in the liquid core of the Earth. Of the earth. And now the Moon being smaller by about one quarter the radius, and uh, colder, you expect no liquid core. Not only that, we know that the density of the core on the Earth is, uh, is very high, is and 12. Uh, and the Moon has got no such dense center, because we know that from uh, a knowledge of its mass. So you would be very surprised to find so, a large magnetic well, field. Well, at any rate, the same reason that we think applies in the case of the Earth, where we don't understand it fully, but it's pretty sure that it is deep down that the field is generated. Yeah. That same kind of object does not exist in the inside of the Moon. No. So, if the Moon has a field, it has it for a totally different reason. Yeah, the Earth. which and would be terribly interesting. Very interesting, perhaps rather unlikely. So far as the effect on the surface is concerned, the existence of a field on the Moon would make a very big difference to my way of thinking what goes on in the course of time on the surface. No. Because uh, the surface features of the Moon, there's of course much discussion, and I know that Harold will take me up in a minute, uh, <coughs> have undoubtedly changed over the ages, nothing like as rapidly as, as uh, features on the Earth, m much more slowly by a huge factor, but there have been gradual changes as well as the big explosive events that gave rise to the craters that we see. We can say that because uh, there is a consistent effect that the older craters are flatter, lower, more rounded, they look uh, worn and the craters that can be in, in independently estimated as being much newer are uh, steeper and more rugged. You see, I agree with you, Tom, about, um, about this type of erosion on the moon. The place where we disagree is, is whether it is a dominant effect. Uh, and, uh, and I interpret the observable features on the moon as being much older, I think, than you do. I believe the big coll collisions on the moon must have taken place in the period of about four and a half billion years ago. But the uh, question of age, I mean, uh, that doesn't alter the fact that some kind of a gradual process has gone on. 
Uh, it, it has gone into your way of thinking over four and a half billion years. But now the question is still, what is the major leveling down process that occurs on the moon? May, may a leveling down process has happened. What is it that is doing it? May There's I no wind and no water. And Let me interject a, uh, a remark here. And that is that uh, we have a, uh, a little problem in developing uh, this uh, project of exploration of the moon on which this discussion has a very intimate bearing. Uh, and that is, we may land, as we hope to in, the, in a reasonable course of time, we may land a uh, capsule of uh, remote controlled instruments on the lunar surface, the so-called soft landing. Uh, it is unfortunately possible that the capsule may land on a magnetic, magnetized rock uh, outcropping and completely destroy and give us a completely spurious impression of the moon's <laughs> magnetic field. Uh, we will have, for this reason, we will have to allow in this capsule, if possible, for the possible, for some locomotion. This can be done either by Picks a... itself up and walks off across the moon. Precisely, <laughs> precisely. Let us say rolls rather than walks. But now, when you get to that point in, in our plans, you have to immediately wonder is the moon covered with a heavy layer of dust, as you propose? Or is, it, or is it the sands of the Sahara that we will find? Or do we have a craggy surface of 20-foot boulders? The There's one thing we're sure about, and that is that, so now I would that, like the, you to craggy, that the craggy, rough surface, yeah. such as either mountains on the Earth or lava that has been all buckled up in freezing, yes. that that is not the top because surface. of the radar reflections. The itself. radar reflections from the moon show quite clearly that to a scale of 10 centimeters, so much, yeah. the uh, surface the is, is smooth. pretty smooth. It is about as smooth as the Sahara okay. at that wavelength. Now, at much shorter wavelengths, of course, it is rough. We know optically it is rough. Yeah. But it is certainly much smoother than most of the Earth's equally mountainous areas. So it does not consist of a car. So you're not going surface to have that thing boulders. falling into a crack every few yards. That's pretty sure. No. Because you might be unlucky. It might be just the one place where there is no. a crack. Now, would you say <laughs> that it is the sands of the Sahara or a thick layer of compressible dust? Well, I think uh, it's most likely that it is fine dust, but that it has, uh, within a few inches of the surface, uh, frozen itself together pretty well, so that you will not, I think, uh, sink in I mean, it's deeply. In some way. It uh, has grown together, it has grown molecular bonds from one grain to the next ah. by lying there, protected underneath the overlying dust. So you it have a spongy pretty uh, solid. layer. But on the top there'll be uh, maybe an inch or a few inches, I can't tell. I see. Uh, right. That will be no. fairly loose. That's right. And I think the, I should maybe explain a little more, the uh, way in which I think that that dust uh, gets in fact transported by electric uh, bombardment uh, is that uh, individual dust grains lying on the surface get a charge from the high-speed bombardment, and whenever neighboring particles get the same fairly large charge, which is just a statistical effect, then they make a little jump. Yeah. And so that if you look closely at the surface of the moon, in the presence of the stream of high-speed gas from the sun, you would just expect the individual particles to, to jump around. Yeah, uh, all and the to time. diffuse. And to diffuse, surface. and so that yeah. when it's on a, on a slope, they would tend to walk downhill. If yeah. it was a slope that was originally very rough, left over from whatever events made the thing, of course they would tend to fill in all the hollows and make just that smooth surface, which there radar... There are very now, rough places like that in the maria of the moon. Are there are, really? are, but pretty major They're features. Well, I was well, large features. Well, they seen. Uh, that's yeah. all we Two kilometers say. across. And they have started to get filled up. They have this very flat bottom even in them. So it looks as if uh, there's always a tendency to fill the thing up. If they've happened sufficiently recently and are big enough, then they're still there. And in the course of time, uh, we'll of get to I wonder up. what these enormous, uh, these uh, uh, snaky-like looking ridges that yeah, appear yes. so beautifully on I know, that's certain the, photographs, particularly that's the those of Professor in Kuiper. The, in the uh, Mara? That's in the, the maggots in the these, cheese. Uh, these full oh, it's a... Uh, these it looks just like the maggots, the, the, the maggots wormholes have eaten out in the cheese, yeah. But uh, as a matter of fact, <laughs> maybe sand dunes. What do you think? Well, sand well, dunes? What are those? No, no, there are some, those there are look some to me mostly like the like holes things. produced yes. by the congelation of, a, of the lava, very viscous. It, uh, there must have been some flow, and as the flow diminished and the lava cooled and hardened, you have some remnant of the last. You know, the Flow curious pattern. thing about it is that I have looked at it precisely at the pictures exactly in that way, 
And this means that somewhere you must uh, see some evidence, I think, as to where the lava flowed from. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I can't see any place from which it flowed. That's why I think that well, there's been no theory. lava flow, of course. You have a theory that these seas of lava actually were produced by the impact of, of uh, large objects, planetesimals, with the, with the lunar surface. Yes. The impact heating them and, in fact, melting them so that they uh, flow over... That's a, that's a very and old still, idea. And you still uh, hold to this theory? I, I just like to, just to well, do honor to uh, an American gentleman who published a wonderful paper on the moon, just remind you again that G.K. Gilbert yes. published a paper in this city and presented a paper in this city in December 1892 in which many of these things that we discussed were discussed by him. Yeah. That was in 1892, and uh, so in a way, we're rather behind well, we uh, times. we haven't got any closer to the moon yet, except That's that right. little way that... <laughs> this is an exciting aspect, But it was his way. idea yes. that the lavas yep. that filled the Maria were due to the great collisions. Now, I'll tell you, some of my scientific friends will stoutly argue that a collision of this kind cannot, cannot produce molten it, no. lava. Now, I this too. happens I repeatedly. Yes. But there's one thing I think it would yes. do. I believe it would be able to produce the finely divided materials that we see in the chondritic yeah, meteorites. Oh, oh yes, oh yes. And it that, just may be that, that, that these maria are do are filled up with rubble of this kind that we see in the chondritic meteorites. Well, it's meteorite. got to be something well, that can distribute itself pretty flat. I mean, it's true that the maria are not absolutely flat, but they have only <clears> very <throat> slight hills in them. Well, what and whatever it is that fills them up has got to be able to flow pretty flat. Now, I think, in fact, that it is adequately accounted for completely by the dust, and moreover, that the lava, even if you made it, will not have got itself as flat as all that. It's well, very difficult to make these enormous saying? distances there of very flat There is one Maria on the moon, however, Tommy, there's one Maria on the moon that looks very much like a lava flow, and that's Mari Tranquillitatis. Mm. Yeah. It has a black, jagged, know, it has these irregular outline, features. and it looks to me like a lava flow. Well, is it but its possible? surface is certainly more smooth than any lava Maybe flow so. on the Earth it's is. It's pretty far from the center. You do not get much reflections from it, that's true. Is it not possible, however, center of the moon's disk, I mean, yes, yes, yes. That, the, that most of the uh, uh, seas that one observes on the moon uh, were lava flows produced by upwelling uh, at an earlier stage of the moon's history when it was a lot hotter? Uh, you've done some calculations on the heating of the interior by radioactive elements, etc. Do you consider this possibility as consistent with what is known? Because that would um, be the easiest and most plausible assumption. No, I would like to say it. that I have been able to convince myself from time to time that the Maria were molten lava, that the Mar coming from the interior of the moon, produced by collisions on the surface of the moon, that there are dust, that there are chondritic meteorites, that they are covered with pumice, all sorts of things. And I believe that so far as looking at the surface of the moon, opinions as to what it consists of are very largely subjective. That is, you see what you want to but see. But let's, let's for a moment take the argument against the lava. I mean, just to point yes. it out, uh, the idea that these enormous basins of lava, once that that amount of liquid stuff existed on the moon, at the same time as the solid structures that surround these regions, yeah. and that nevertheless, despite the flow of such gigantic quantities of liquid, these other structures were not buckled in the least. They were not folded, not doubled over, not even pushed around very much. Whilst on How the earth, whilst on the earth yeah. with liquids flowing around that are a minute fraction of all this, yeah. uh, we have distorted the surface enormously. enormously. This great stability of the lunar surface over all the times from the oldest markings to the present does not go together with enormous basins of liquid stuff just under Some the surface. What, fe what feature of the uh, surface irregularities of the moon, the, the mountain ranges and so forth, indicates clearly that they were not pushed around and buckled? Circularity, which uh, if these were seas what, of lava, you cannot think that the stuff has been shoved around and pushed and contorted, no. and then in the end leaves a lot of circular markings. Yeah. Returning to this question of the uh, lunar surface again, because uh, once more it has a, a practical interest for the uh, design of the first propelled vehicles. Uh, I gather that uh, the feeling is that the surface will be smooth, it may consist of sintered dust with a layer of loose dust on top of it or it may resemble the sands of the Sahara. <coughs> By and large, it'll be more like landing in the Sahara, uh, or, or perhaps 
if there were such a thing as Sahara covered with a few inches of snow. It's very exciting uh, to uh, uh, consider the fact that for the first time, at least since 1892, according to your, idea, your remarks about Gilbert a little while ago, we are now about to make a major step forward in our uh, understanding, our knowledge of the properties of the moon and thereby of the solar system. Well, gentlemen, I should like to thank you very much for uh, allowing yourselves to be imposed on and taking part in this discussion. It's been a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm.